In a world of cheap, lazy horror movies, where random, ear-splitting noises have replaced being actually scary. Oh, snap, that's loud. That's loud. One production company will use competent writing and creativity. I was being creative. You're a real creative prick. To make a real scary story. This summer, prepare to feel the fear with Cuckoo. Yep, that is its name. As I mentioned in my Long Legs review, in a landscape of redundant, cheap, gimmicky horror films, I had kind of given up on seeing a good, scary movie again. Don't get me wrong, I still enjoy the silly, trashy horror flicks, but the days of me feeling real fear while watching a movie seem to have gone away in the past 5-10 to 10 years. With most horror films opting to randomly assaulting their audience's eardrums with loud noises instead of being actually scary. See my rant in my Long Legs review for more on that subject. But lo and behold, Neon keeps on restoring my faith in horror films. Because last week, when nobody was going to see this absolute train wreck of a movie, I decided to do the smart thing and take a chance on another random neon horror film, Cuckoo. And just like with Long Legs, I am so glad I did. I cannot believe a film production company that I had only ever heard of once before, they did Parasite, has in one year put out two horror films that will forever be in my October horror movie lineup, Long Legs and now Cuckoo. This movie is so simple yet so well done and it stands as a testament to that if you can execute the basics of something at a high level, you can make something really extraordinary. Because this film doesn't have over-the-top gratuitous gore, it has no cheesy gimmicks to rely on, and it never shatters your eardrum with low-effort jump scares. Instead, it uses a well-written narrative coupled with great visuals using simple camera techniques to build up suspense and fear, creating genuine moments of horror, while at the same time constructing an intriguing mystery. Because that's what this movie is, a well-done horror mystery creature feature. So for my highbrow critic score, I give Cuckoo a 8 out of 10. And for my schmo score, the score for the average Joe Schmo, I give it a 7 out of 10. Now, this is the part where I explain my review scores, but I'm going to be as vague and spoiler free as possible, because I do recommend that you go see this movie for yourself. That being said, if you wish to see this movie completely spoiler free, which again, I highly recommend that you do, this is where we part ways. Thanks for being here, and I hope you have a nice day. As I mentioned earlier, this is a simple film, from the story to the setting and the overall visuals, just with everything cranked up to a 10. The strongest part of this film is the writing. It is engaging, concise, with no real time wasted. And the narrative actually makes rational sense, with the characters behaving like actual human beings. People acting like people in a horror movie? Crazy, I know. That always seems to be the Achilles heel of horror movies, where the characters don't behave like normal people would, because if they did, it would negate the entire film. Like that new horror movie coming out, Speak No Evil, where the premise of the movie hinges on two fully functional adults being absolutely brain dead idiots where the whole situation can be resolved by them just leaving which they could do at any moment no they have a flat tire really 
Again, these are supposedly two fully functional adults that can't seem to solve this extremely easy problem. Well, that's because the real problem is bad writing. Bad writing, bad writing. Anyways, there is none of that in Cuckoo, for the most part. Another great aspect of the writing in this film is the overarching mystery, because I would almost be tempted to call this movie a slow burn had it not been for the well-written mystery part that keeps the audience fully engaged during the slower parts between the horror scenes. Also, the character development of the main protagonist is done really well because this story revolves around a 17-year-old girl going through a hard time in her life, and it easily could have gone down the usual annoying, self-centered teen that is dumb and unlikable. But they didn't. Sure, she's not perfect and makes some bad decisions, but the film is always sure to hint at possible reasons for why she does the things she does. And as she is put through the trials of this horrific situation she finds herself in, we get to see her go from a typical teen to someone who has to make tough decisions and put others before herself. This adds to the overall horror element because she becomes a likable character that you ultimately don't want to see die. This is exactly what you want in a good protagonist. The second biggest strength of this movie is its visuals. This movie is stylized after the old horror movies of the 80s and 90s. No over-the-top CGI in this movie, just practical effects with good old-fashioned creative camera work. I really liked how the majority of the shots in this movie are filmed at a lower angle looking up almost like it's from the perspective of a child because it just makes everything look bigger and more creepier which is a really cool horror effect and the overall aesthetic of this film is just so appealing i really like the late 1980s gritty slasher horror film look that neon has been doing and i hope they continue to do more of it now this movie isn't perfect for instance, the reason I gave Cuckoo a lower schmo score is because it's more of a horror mystery than a traditional horror. And with the ever-shrinking attention spans of the modern moviegoer, I think some people may feel this movie is too slow for them. Also, if you're looking for a gore fest with a lot of death scenes, this is not the movie for you. In fact, barely anyone actually dies in this movie. And since a high death count usually raises the stakes in your typical horror movie, I feel people may not like the lack of death scenes in this film. On a more critical note, there is only three or four things narratively that don't make sense, but they are all small and not really too impactful to the overall story. Like one of the characters getting injured in a way that normal people would not survive, let alone be running around and doing action-y stuff 10 minutes later. Another example is at one point, people randomly relay important information over a PA system for literally no reason. Well, the reason is they needed the protagonist to get that information and the writers didn't come up with a good way for them to get it organically. Bad writing, fix it. Also, a small plot point is that it is common for people to randomly get sick and throw up, which since this movie takes place in a mountain resort, I thought they were going to at some point say, oh, it's just the altitude sickness, but they never do because no one seems to question why a lot of people are just randomly throwing up all the time. Really? No one's concerned at all by that? Okay. And lastly, in the beginning of the movie, they introduce a family dog that has a two-minute scene where it barks at something in the woods. And that's it. We never see the dog or hear about the dog ever again. Insert Chekhov's gun, the original principle, as to why you don't do that. But that's really it. There's just four things that I would rework. Though these things are small, and don't really have any effect on the overarching mystery or plot of the film. Overall, Cuckoo is a compelling horror mystery that is well written with engaging stylized visuals. 
However, unlike long legs, I think Cuckoo will be just as impactful viewing it at home as it is in theaters. Which, as I mentioned in my long legs review, I'm not sure if that's a weakness or a strength. I'm just saying Cuckoo is not a must-see theater experience. That being said, if you are a fan of horror movies or just want to see a good movie in theaters, I highly recommend you check out Cuckoo. Anyways, thanks for being here. I appreciate you and I'll catch you at the next one.